Namaste, hello and welcome to NCRT's live phone program. In this particular session of science, we are going to talk about sign convention in light. If you have any questions, please send it on our email ID which is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. All the 10th class students, if you haven't read about the sign convention in light, then please watch this session and uh, understand and uh, learn a lot of new things here. So our expert will be explaining you certain things uh, in here for next half an hour. So you can keep on sending your questions and uh, our expert will be more than happy to answer all of your queries. You're watching us live on PME with their channel number 10. Let's meet, uh, let's meet him. He is uh, Mr. Rahul S. Chatterjee. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, sir. Sir is an assistant lecturer of physics from Shillong Jail Road Boys Higher Secondary School. So let's begin with this discussion and uh, I would like to ask sir before uh, beginning with the explanation what exactly are we learning are our students learning in this particular session what exactly are the learning outcomes okay so for today uh, what I thought of covering in half an hour are basically these few points uh, first of all, what is the new Cartesian sign convention? Then we'll uh, see that it applies to both mirrors and lenses with appropriate differences. And then we'll see uh, why we need this convention. What is the need of this convention at all? And then finally, uh, using the sign convention in solving numerical problems. So these are the few things we're going to do in a packed session of 30 minutes. Okay. So let's begin with okay. the first thing, which is uh, the new Cartesian sign convention. What exactly is it? Sure. Let's take it up from there. So what is the new Cartesian sign convention? Basically, the Cartesian sign convention, or as we say, the new Cartesian sign convention, is a set of rules, is a set of conventions uh, that help us uh, in you know, giving signs positive or negative, to different quantities that we come up with uh, in uh, when we work with lenses and mirrors in geometrical optics. Remember, this is just a convention. So it is a practice. These are not nature's laws. So these are made to make life easier for us. When we do uh, numerical problems, uh, things become a lot easier when we have a certain set of rules to go by. That is the whole purpose behind this. And that's why I say we, we say it is a convention. So what are the conventions? Well, we have a set of rules, and the rules are these. The first one we say is the object is always to be placed on the left of the mirror, which means that the incident ray must always move from the left hand side to the right hand side. So that is the first thing. Then we say all distances parallel to the principal axis are measured from the pole of the mirror. So we start from the pole of the mirror and either we measure to the left or we measure to the right, starting from the pole. If the distance is measured to the right of the mirror, then we take those distances as positive, and if the distances are measured to the left of the mirror, then we take those distances as negative. And distances is measured perpendicular to and above the principal axis. If you recall the definition of the principal axis, is the line passing through the pole. So if it is uh, perpendicular to the principal axis and above the principal axis, then it's taken positive, and the one perpendicular to the principal axis and below the principal axis, that is taken as negative. So to summarize all of this in a quick diagram, this is taken from your textbook directly. So we have, this is the point P is the pole, and so all distances to the left of the pole are taken as negative, and all distances to the right of the pole P are taken as positive. 
again, all heights above the principal axis are taken as positive, and all heights below are taken as negative. But think about it. Is it a very familiar situation that we start point and everything left is negative and everything right is positive of that particular point? Above is positive, below is negative. Isn't this something very familiar? Isn't that what we do in graphs? So, if on the x and y axis we place a mirror, concave mirror, then things exactly fall in place and we realize that, well, this is what we're really doing in, when we talk about the sign convention. We are really talking about the x coordinates of the positions of the focus or center of curvature or the object or the image. So basically, we are talking about the coordinates, the x coordinates of those objects. And therefore, when we really talk about uh, u or v, these are technically not distances, though it becomes a distance because our origin, the, the pole of the mirror is the origin. But actually, we're talking of coordinates, and that is why anything on the left has a negative sign, anything on the right has a negative sign. Anything above the principal axis along the y-axis will have a positive sign, and those below will have a negative sign. So if we uh, summarize this, then for, all, uh, for a concave mirror, focal length f and radius of curvature r are both negative. And if we do it for a convex mirror in that case, again, the pole of the mirror is the origin. Then you can see that both focus and, uh, and radius of curvature are going to be both positive. And the same applies, the same rules apply for um, the convex lens. But because the convex lens has two curved surfaces, for the left-hand side curved surface, the focus and the radius of curvature are on the right-hand side. And for the right-hand side curved surface, the focus and uh, center of curvature are on the left-hand side. But again, the rules apply the same way that the object has to be placed on the left-hand side. So the object is going to be on the left-hand side. All rays of light are going to flow from, uh, that means the all incident rays are going to flow from uh, left to right. And then because a lens is transparent, light will go through it and pass, refract, and pass through it to the other side. So, if we look at this situation, for example, then in this case, we have the object on the negative side, which means U is going to be negative, F, of course, is going to be uh, positive in this case, and V, the image is again formed on the right hand side so the image uh, distance is going to be positive or if we take the case of uh, the convex lens but in in, in this case where a uh, uh, virtual image is formed so in this case u is negative that means the object distance is negative because u must be on the left hand side but the image is also formed on the negative side so v will also be negative in this case. Or we could take a concave uh, lens, and in, in the case of a concave lens, it's the only one possibility, we always get a, a virtual image which is formed on the same side as the object. Therefore, uh, both U and V in this case are going to be negative. Uh, F, of course, in this case is also negative because for the left-hand side curved surface, the focus is also on the left-hand side, and therefore the radius of curvature is also on the left-hand side. Right. So, all this while, what we have been focusing on is how to apply the sign convention. If things are on the left-hand side of the origin, that means of the pole of the mirror, or optical center of the lens, then we take them as negative, starting from the origin, that means starting from the optical center or from the pole. And if things are on the right-hand side, then we take them as positive. So, but the point is, why do we need the sign convention at all? Why can't we do without it? The answer is here. 
this is the mirror formula. 1 by V plus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. Now, have you noticed that we call this the mirror formula? We don't have something called the formula of the convex mirror or the formula for the concave mirror separately. This is just one formula. So the point is, how do you tell the formula what kind of mirror you are working with so that the formula can appropriately and correctly give you the correct answer for the position of the formation of the image? So that is why we need the sign convention. Similarly, we have two kinds of lenses. And this is the lens formula, 1 by, v, 1 by u equal to 1 by f. But if we don't use the sign convention, how are we telling the formula what kind of lens are we working with? Because we have just one formula for both the lenses, which is a good thing. We don't want different formula for different lenses, because then life is going to be very, very difficult. We'll have to remember four different formulae, uh, two for mirrors and two for um, uh, lenses. That we don't want. We have one single formula for mirrors and one single formula for lenses, which is a good thing. But because we might be using different kinds of mirrors or different kinds of lenses, we need to tell the formula what are we working with. And that is why we need the sign convention. So I, I just mentioned that. So we see that the sign convention is necessary for passing this information on the kind of mirror or lens we dealing with to the formula. Okay? So now, let us uh, solve a few numerical problems using the sign convention. So here we have this numerical problem. And uh, we have uh, an object of size 7 centimeters is placed at 27 centimeters, 27 centimeters in front of a concave mirror of focal length 18 centimeters. Question is, at what distance from the mirror should the screen be placed so that a sharp, focused image can be obtained? And find the size and nature of the image. So, from this question, the data that we conceive, the data that we can pick out is that, first of all, it's a concave mirror. Concave mirror, an object is going to be in front of it, so object always, object distance is going to be negative, so it's going to be minus 27 centimeters. Focal length of a concave mirror is negative, because that is also on the left-hand side of the mirror, so that's going to be minus 18. Question is to find the object distance. No, sorry, the image distance, V. So, if we proceed. Right. So this is the data we have, and uh, looking at the problem, uh, we can see this is going to be the kind of ray diagram that uh, we would uh, be having if we really drew the ray diagram. If you look at the problem, then the focal length is 18 centimeters, uh, and the object is placed at 27 centimeters. Now, 18 twos are 36, which means the object is placed between the focus and the center of curvature. And that is this image. The object is placed between the center of curvature and the focus. And in that case, the image is magnified and beyond the center of curvature. So this is what we expect. So it's good to know what to expect as an answer so that when we get the answer, we shouldn't be surprised. Or uh, we should know uh, uh, whether the answer is correct. So uh, putting the uh, using the mirror formula, we put the values. So 1 by V plus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. So put the values and uh, transpose to the other side. So we have... Uh, 
1 by v equal to 1 by minus 18 minus 1 by minus 27, which will become plus. And so I bring it to the other side, so 1 by 27 minus 1 by 18, and uh, so the LCM is 54. And so you have 1 by v is 2 minus 3 by 54, which means minus 1 by 54, or v is going to be minus 54. Now, v is minus 54. That means the image is formed again on the left of the pole of the mirror, which means it's real. And the first part of the question was, where should we place a screen so that we can have a focused image? So wherever the image is formed, if we place a screen there, we will get a sharp image of it. So that means the screen should be placed at 54 centimeters from the pole of the mirror. But the question does not end there. It says also find the size and nature of the image. So to find the size and nature of the image, we recall that we found V is minus 54 centimeters. And uh, I said that the negative sign signifies that the image is formed in front of the mirror, that the image is real. That answers the nature of the image, right? But we still have to find what is the size of the image. So we use this relation that height of image by height of object is equal to minus V by U. So all these quantities except H dash, that means the size of the image is known. So we can substitute all these values and find H dash. So we find H dash is 14 centimeters. And if you recall, the size of the object was seven centimeters. And now we found that the image is 14 centimeters, which is again magnified, right? So uh, it again fits into our picture of uh, what we had drawn and what we expected. So uh, that gives you uh, a hint when you are doing these uh, problems, whether in class or as a test or at home as homework, or even during an exam, that yes, I've got the answer that I had expected. And so you should feel confident and happy and move ahead. So again, over here, since we got a uh, height as a minus 14, it means that the image is formed below the principal axis. And when an image is formed below the principal axis, it is inverted. And if it is inverted, it means it is real. So there are multiple ways you can conclude about the nature of the image, right? So that is, um, one problem. Now, let me take another problem and uh, let's have a look at this one. So, here's an object five centimeter in length and placed at a distance of 20 centimeter in front of a convex mirror this time. The previous one was a concave mirror. So, this is a convex mirror of radius of curvature 30 centimeter and find the position of the image, its nature, and size. Now, for a convex mirror, we know that always the image is going to be virtual, always it is going to be diminished, always it is going to be upright. Okay, so those few things are always going to be true. The only thing that we need to find out is at what distance from the pole and at what is going to be the height of it, and what is going to be the size. It is going to be diminished, all right, but what will be the size? These are the things we need to find. There are certain things we already know. So we know what to expect, therefore. So if this is five centimeter, the size of the image has to be shorter than this, right? So if we, uh, again, use our mirror formula, one by V plus one by U equal to one by F, and we substitute the values over here. So here, U is minus 20, because it's on the left of the pole. So, and radius of curvature is given, focal length is not given, mind you. It's radius of curvature. So we need to, in the formula, we need F, we need the focal length. And so, radius of curvature divided by two is the focal length. So focal length must be 15 centimeters. So we use that in this expression, one by V plus one by minus 20 minus U, equal to 1 by 15, because radius of curvature is positive, because focal length and radius of curvature both, uh, focal and radius of curvature both are on the right of the pole. So, 
substitute those values and uh, the LCM in this case is going to be 60. So uh, we do the LCM and we find that the distance of the object is 8 plus 8.57 centimeters. It is plus. So the moment you see a plus, you will know that it is going to be on the right hand side of the pole of the mirror. All right? So it's on the right hand side of the pole of the mirror and which means this is really behind the mirror like we get to see our own image on a plane mirror every day, that kind of an image behind the mirror. So uh, that kind of a mirror, uh, that kind of an image is always virtual. So this image is therefore virtual. And uh, there is uh, the second part of the question, the position of the image and the nature and size. So size we found out, uh, so, so position we found out 8.57 centimeters. Um, we need to find the, uh, sorry, nature and size. So uh, to find the nature and size, we use this same relation like before, that size of image by size of object is minus V by U. And we substitute these quantities that we already have. The only quantity we don't have is the size of the uh, image, H dash. All other quantities are known. So I substitute those values and instead of uh, taking uh, the decimal fraction 8.57, I take the fraction otherwise here, 60 by 7, and that makes my calculation a lot easier. And so we find the height is 2.14. And as expected, I told you that we expect that the height of the image is going to be less than 5 centimeters. That's what we got. And so again, we should know that we are on the right track. So when you are doing a numerical problem, make sure you get these feedbacks from your answer that yes, you're on the right track and so you should move ahead. Answer, the answers that you're getting should tell you where you are or whether you've made a mistake or not. So the height of the image is uh, 2.14 centimeter, which means it is diminished. And also notice that H dash has a positive sign in front of it. Now, if the height is positive, it means that the image is formed above the principal axis. And any image that is formed above the principal axis means it is upright. And if it is upright, it means it is virtual. So there are multiple ways, again, you can make a conclusion about the nature of the image. So finally, what are the conclusions you're making about the nature of the image? One, that it is virtual. Two, that it is upright, three, that it is diminished. And of course, we also found earlier, and so it answers all the questions that were asked in this problem. So, to summarize then what we learned today, how to use the uh, sign convention and why we need to use the sign convention. I told you, we need to use the sign convention to tell the formula which type of mirror or which type of lens we are using so that the formula can appropriately give us the correct answer. So you see, for a concave mirror, focal length is negative, object distance is negative, and image distance is negative for real image, positive for virtual image. For a convex mirror, focal length, is po focal length is positive, the object distance is negative, and image distance is always positive for a convex mirror. There is no other option, always positive. For a con convex lens, focal length is always positive. U is, that means the object distance is negative, but image distance can be positive for a real image or negative for a virtual image. And for a concave lens, focal length again is negative, U is always negative, and V, which means image distance, is always positive. So if you look at it carefully, you look at this final table carefully, you will always you will find something or the other is different. No two thing, no two items are the same. Say for example, we take convex mirror and concave lens. 
we have v always positive for both of them we have u always we yeah always negative for both of them but focal length is positive for one and negative for the other and this is the information that the formula is going to get uh, which will tell it what to how to act and what to how, and how to go about of course the formula itself is different for a mirror and a lens that apart there are other things which are also different so um, this is the re uh, re reason for um, using the sign convention because here in class 10 we don't do the deduction for the formulae but when you do the deduction if we don't use the sign convention you will see that we get two different formulae one for a convex mirror and a different one for a convex mirror if we don't use the sign convention and that becomes a problem we don't want two different formulae for a mirror two different formulae for a lens to avoid that problem we use the sign convention while deducing it and again apply the sign convention while using the formula to tell the formula what we are using whether it is a, a convex mirror convex lens or a, a convex uh, mirror or a concave mirror or a convex lens or a concave lens so that brings me to the end of this lesson short crisp i hope and i hope uh, you liked it and it has served your purpose and uh, if there are just about two minutes three minutes more if there are any questions i'd be more than happy to uh, answer them sure sir um, it was yes, very sir. helpful thank you so much uh, but yes we have a question from one of our viewers and uh, the person is asking what is the sign of magnification for real image what is the sign of magnification for a real image yes now magnification is uh, height of image by height of object and uh, that is minus v and if it is real then the image is always going to have a minus sign with it the image is always going to be uh, negative while the object is going to be positive so there will be a minus sign with magnification okay and, uh, and the negative sign with the magnification basically means that the image is below the principal axis that's all the number tells you how many times it is bigger and the sign tells you whether it is above the principal axis or below the principal axis okay uh, one last question, please answer it uh, very briefly because we have got last one minute left. Are real images always inverted? Yes, real images are always inverted. Okay. All right. Thank you so much uh, for your time, for the explanation, and uh, I'm sure uh, the viewers, uh, the audience who were watching your session, uh, they are thanking you as well for everything. Um, so, thank you uh, again for uh, your time. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I absolutely enjoyed it and I hope uh, the students enjoyed it and uh, found it useful. Truly. Thank you to all the viewers as well. Uh, this entire explanation, entire presentation was for you. If you have still any questions left, then please send it uh, on our email ID, which is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. Upcoming next is a Hindi class where we are going to talk about a particular session. Uh, and the topic is going to be Sana Sana Hath Jodi Madhu Kankriya. Thodi Dei Mein Hum Vapas Aayenge Aur Is Hindi Ki Class Mein Hum Sabhi 10th Class Ke Bacho Ke Liye Is Par Baat Cheet Karenge Aap Apne Sawaal Taiya Rakhi Ga Aur Hume Bheechna Bhi Aap Chahe To Bheech Sate Hain Hamari Email ID Pe Thodi Dei Mein Milte Hain Tab Tak Ke Liye Apna Dhyan Rakhi Ga Namaskar